Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Luisa, and I have been working at the Ministry of Culture and Information Policy of Ukraine for almost five years. And um, I have seen the boom of creative industries and their institutions. I have seen a pandemic crisis and post-pandemic recovery. And creative industries, despite all the troubles, have always been there supporting, encouraging, inspiring, and comforting us. Through thick and thin, they have been making Ukraine uh, a more vibrant, colorful, peaceful, and European country to live in. However, the war changed everything. In 2014, when uh, Russians occupied a Ukrainian city of, Don of Donetsk, they took a large creative hub, Izolatia, isolation, and turned it into torturing facilities, into a prison. There is another uh, event recently that really struck me. So in 2022, when, Russian, when Russians retreated from Bucha, it's a town not far from Kiev, the capital, they mined a piano of a uh, 10-year-old girl so they did it deliberately with a cold ha head. They put a mine inside. They arranged the awards uh, back, knowing that it was a, a room of a small girl. Um, luckily, parents, when they were back, they noticed that the order of um, the awards was different and the catastrophe, catastrophe was prevented, but only this time. In all other occupied territories of Ukraine, um, everything that is creative is being destroyed right now. So the full-scale invasion jeopardized the very existence of creative industries in Ukraine. It killed them where Russia remained state for too long. And I believe that creative industries can survive the toughest economic crisis but there is one thing that eradicates them totally, and that is the absence of freedom. Because freedom is the key to creativity, innovation, competition, and therefore creative industries cannot exist in autocratic country. So there is only one way to ensure the future of creative industries in Ukraine to save the war, to, to, to win the war, and to secure Ukraine's freedom. And our creative industries in Ukraine understand it perfectly well, and they have been participating in the national resistance since the first days of the full-scale invasion. First, they are the medium, a very important medium to convey Ukrainian messages and narratives to foreign audiences and share the truth through memes, uh, videos, designs, songs, and other creative content. This military conflict is called a smartphone war because our military success and the assistance provided by our allies largely depends on our information success. So there have been a lot of um, grassroots self-organized initiatives uh, that are producing actually this creative content. And for, for example, our Minister, Ministry of Defense uses some of the memes in their official Twitter account to mock Ukrainian, uh, to mock Russian uh, soldiers. International campaign Be Brave Like Ukraine, visits of Hollywood stars to Ukraine, and the release of some of the Azov style prisoners couldn't have been possible without the efforts of our creative professionals. So Ukraine is winning this social media war. We also have um, an IT army, more than 200,000 uh, common users, common Ukrainians, helping to take down Russian digital infrastructure and financial services. Second, creative industries keep working and exporting, even in the darkest hour, even during the uh, blackouts. For example, during the first eight months of 2022, uh, IT experts uh, has increased by 23% as compared to the same period uh, last year. Also, creative businesses started producing items for our Ukrainian 
army, uh, such as like uniforms, army boots, and even um, bulletproof vests. And such projects as spent with Ukraine and made with bravery encourage foreign audience to, to buy more Ukrainian good, goods and services, and they also raise funds for, for our victory. And third, many Ukrainian creative professionals have actually joined the army. And these are our best people, the smartest ones, the most talented ones, the, uh, the brightest ones. And we lose our best people. Yesterday, for example, uh, Vadim Kupianets, who was an artist in the National Operetta Theatre of Ukraine, died. He was uh, 26 years old, and he was a, a creative professional, and he, he died. And uh, Pan Ukraine updates the list of people of culture taken away by the war, and that's the most painful thing to look at. Before the full-scale invasion, creative industries in Ukraine were a dynamic sector that amounted to 4.2% of our GDP. But when invasion started, the total number of taxpayers in creative industries decreased by 60%, and the declared income dropped by 41%. 37% of creative professionals lost their jobs. Revenues that are lost due to the uh, disruption of the value-added chains in creative industries uh, amount to $1 billion monthly. So brain drain, stagflation, and disruption of all the ch chains that's, uh, that are the problems, that are the issues that we are facing right now. And um, at the same time, the state budget was uh, reallocated to support the army. So we were in a situation when uh, we didn't have uh, enough funds to support specifically our creative industries. Of course, there were certain schemes to provide immediate financial assistance to uh, unemployed. Uh, workers, including in creative se sectors, but it was not enough. So close cooperation with development partners is one of the main ideas that underpins uh, Ukraine's recovery plan. And there were two main priorities at the beginning, to preserve employment and to help creative businesses to resume their activity, to keep working and producing creative goods and services. And uh, our international partners helped us by providing grants, immediate financial assistance, scholarships, um, and direct equipment support, and also uh, study opportunities and residences for Ukrainian creatives um, abroad. So as you can see, there are many parties to the Ukrainian recovery plan that are already uh, implementing necessary measures. So it's not a purely governmental plan. And the level of cooperation between uh, international donators and uh, the Ukrainian cultural sector is decentralized and really horizontal. Uh, but in the long term, the trajectory, the Ukrainian recovery trajectory, needs to be focused on economic uh, liberalization. But currently, as you can see, the Ukraine's recovery plan is also very uh, dynamic. So currently there is a debate and discussion on how exactly this economic liberalization should look like in terms of uh, tax policies, labor policies, monetary policies. Um, and these policies should take into account Ukraine's future accession to the European Union and the increased um, governmental spending during and after the war. However, whatever the uh, liberalization path of Ukraine looks like, the working group identified main uh, pillars to um, help Ukrainian creative industries uh, to recover and grow. So these are uh, pillars like leverages to which we can apply our resources and like, amplify the effect. And one of the first pillars, very important one, is education, because we are losing our people and there is brain drain, but also our 
creative professionals accessed new markets when the war started, so it requires new competences. And education is crucial in this process. So we've been thinking about schemes for establishing closer ties between universities and creative businesses about uh, boosting the entrepreneurial skills of uh, Ukrainian creative professionals, about the development of policy-making skills in creative industries, and uh, the British Council was really supported in this um, regard. And in the long term, we are also thinking about launching a creative backpack program, which would allocate state funding for the trips of school students to uh, different parts of Ukraine where they can uh, get acquainted with uh, contemporary creative professions and practices. So the second very important pillar is the capacity building of our institutions. And by institutions, I don't necessarily mean uh, like formal and official institutions. The war uh, has shown that the cultural landscape of Ukraine is very diverse. We have a lot of NGOs, creative hubs, emergency schemes, local and regional um, agencies, and they are really close to the markets. They, they know their markets, and they can help them without, um, with less bureaucratic burden. And they have shown amazing resilience under pres present circumstances. And this like, resilience should be um, strengthened and their capacity should be enhanced like, during and after the war. So we are talking about um, um, project management, financial management, grant management, um, government relations, digitalization, cross-sectoral cooperations with these institutions to, to, uh, to build their capacity, improve their capacity. But also it's important to, um, uh, regarding our formal institutions that were deprived of state funding since the beginning of the war, such as the Ukrainian Cultural Foundation, uh, the Ukrainian Book Institute, it's also <coughs> important to keep the, them going because institutionalization is the key to success when it comes to creative industries. Third, we're talking about targeted instruments for businesses to address possible um, market asymmetries and market failures. Uh, targeted instruments that would, have, that would be tied to particular key performance indicators. So we have a special package in mind that would include, for example, reimbursement of rental expenses for Ukrainian creative enterprises, such as fashion and design brands in malls, in shopping centers. We're thinking about grant support for Ukrainian stands and booths at the international uh, fairs and exhibitions and events, um, about support in establishing new business supply and demand chains, such as like export promotion, trade missions, B2B meetings and platforms that would help them to assess, uh, to, to access new markets in a more effective manner. Uh, and finally, a grant support for R&D, innovation, high tech in creative industries and also cross sectoral projects because creative industries, as we believe, will also be important in, uh, in our collective mental health and well-being after, after the war. There is another important pillar, which is like infrastructure. So at the moment, there are more than 500 cultural facilities destroyed by Russian attack in Ukraine. And of course, they should be re rebuilt, reconstructed. But we also need to build new cultural sites, such as creative hubs, such as concert halls, to create a more sustainable setting for creative industries development. Before the war, we did the research with the Kiev School of Economics that has shown that when we invest in uh, infrastructure, so capital investment are more effective than investment in consumption. So the um, multiplier is, uh, is much bigger in this case. Uh, so it's important that investments in infrastructure, they not only um, are relevant in economic terms, but they also create spaces for the exchange of ideas and they're important in, 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 in a in content creation sense. And finally, it is very important for Ukraine to continue the internalization and globalization of the Ukrainian culture, given the fact that we have now a lot of creative professionals abroad that establish new partnerships that create 
content uh, in cooperation with uh, their foreign counterparts. Um, so diaspora culture, collaboration of the Ukrainian creatives with foreign artists, digitalization and translation of the Ukrainian creative content are crucial to make uh, our cu culture available in, in foreign, to, to foreign audiences. So I think that creative industries confirm the civilization path that Ukraine has chosen because creative industries can exist only in a free country. And creative industries and their situation right now show that Ukrainians are fighting for their culture, for their state, for their identity, but at the same time for the fundamental uh, human norms and values. And we cannot fight alone. We need your help. So help us to promote Ukrainian culture and creative industries abroad, buy Ukrainian uh, goods and services, spend with Ukraine, call your Ukrainian partners and ask them whether they need assistance with uh, supply, logistics, manufacturing and other aspects, and add any targeted uh, donation to support particular cultural initiatives would also be much appreciated. So today and tonight specifically, it's high time for policymakers in culture and in economy all over the world to show commitment to the true meaning of creative industries, namely the measure of freedom and democracy. Thank you. Herr Slava.